You are watching Not Bad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. Uh, the conversation of how the parliament is going to open is still being debated. In fact, uh, the uh, 7th July cabinet meeting is supposed to be discussing this very exact topic. In the meantime, the Yang Di Pertuan Agong has also uh, asked for all the public, uh, parliamentary select committees and the public accounts committee to start their processions as well. Uh, and there could arguably be no more important uh, PSC than the health PSC itself. Uh, joining us for this uh, episode is the chairperson of the uh, Health, uh, Science and Innovation uh, Parliamentary Select Committee, uh, Yang Bohormat Kelvin Yi. He is the MP of uh, Bandar Kuching. Uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with us, YB. Uh, let's talk about the urgency uh, of that note that you sent to the Speaker of the House, saying that you will convene on 23rd of July. Uh, do you s have you had any responses uh, since uh, issuing that letter? I think uh, since I issued the letter, we have actually made known to the Speaker our intention for us to carry out our responsibility and duties as MPs within the select committee. And this is very important uh, to provide bipartisan check and balance, scrutiny, affirmation to good practices of the government, and of course, input into uh, what we feel could be better in terms of our country's approach towards COVID-19 and of course, the national immunization uh, COVID-19 program. Uh, since then, I have actually spoken to the speaker. Uh, he personally has said that he has no objections over the matter. Uh, fact of the matter is Standing Order 83.5 uh, clearly states that the meeting of the PSC is first decided by the chairperson and then uh, any subsequent meetings will be decided uh, by the committee and if there is no decision being made on subsequent meetings, the chairperson is given uh, authority to discuss with the secretary to set the meetings. So for the fact of the matter is the speaker has no authority to determine whether we can or cannot have a meeting. It is given to the, the chairperson itself. I think the issue, that's why the speaker was saying that uh, he personally has no objections. He actually has no authority over the issue. The issue right now will be the interpretation of the emergency ordinance, uh, where we know that the government, current government uh, interprets that we cannot have any functions. Uh, but as, uh, as, as you mentioned just now, um, the cabinet meeting is going to be held on, on the 7th and they'll be very monumental. The speaker has told us that he has communicated our intention to the law minister, uh, YB Takiyuddin, and, uh, and I do hope they make a clear cabinet decision to remove any obstacles to allow us to meet. So let's, uh, let's uh, ring fence this conversation that we're having right now. We're not necessarily talking about the parliamentary sitting per se, that continues to be the debate. Um, in other forums, but for this particular conversation, it will be about the PSC meeting. Um, and as you rightfully pointed out, the standing order shows that uh, the chairperson uh, has authority to uh, call for the meeting. Um, subsequently, the Speaker of the House has no say on it. Um, having said that, it also means that uh, it should be seen as a parallel track uh, for this uh, PSC meetings to take place. When there is a parallel track, when there is a PSC meeting taking place, there's a PAC, Public Accounts Committee meeting taking place. But let's say, let's say that the parliamentary sitting has not happened yet. What is the authority and legitimacy of all these select committee meetings? Does it have any, um, I guess, uh, authority to uh, make pronouncements coming out of those meetings? What weight does it give? Is, is there a legitimacy uh, to these meetings, uh, so to speak? I think, again, it based on the interpretation of the emergency ordinance. ordinance. I think uh, a lot of the reasons why we made this call was in response to the decree, the decree given by the Yanni Betuan Agong, actually since June, that uh, the, the PAC and the Parliamentary Select Committee should function to provide parliamentary oversight over this matter. And in, my, in our view, that during an emergency, emergency the Yanni Betuan Agong is empowered to make such call. And that is why we, we at first, uh, at first, we put us this letter to the speaker to uh, to signal our intention to have it. In fact, the matter this has been consistent uh, since the beginning. Actually, when we were first elected in in January as the chairperson of this collect committee, we wanted to have a meeting straight away because, uh, as you pointed out just now, uh, we play a pivotal role, especially during this pandemic. Uh, we need to provide check and balance. We need to provide uh, uh, input and also affirm 
uh, are good practices because this is important to build public confidence towards the government's approach towards the pandemic. However, uh, at that time, uh, we, we actually called for a meeting the week after, but then we were stopped because the AG at that time came out of interpretation and said that uh, 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 all these are not allowed. Of course, we, we do not hold the same interpretation, but we hope that with the decree of the Ampetong Nagong and with a, a cabinet decision this Wednesday, uh, at least allow us to function. I think the biggest excuse that the government always give to not have parliament is, I mean, besides COVID, they say that we do not want people to play politics during this time. So I said, well, the very least you can have is allow the bipartisan select committee to carry out its role because what is more important is have parliamentary oversight in this matter. We look examples around the country, they function even during the COVID-19 and they play and discuss important policies to keep the government in check and also to provide this whole society input towards the government. Um, before we uh, lead people to assume that the Parliamentary Select Committee for Health is a pro-opposition composition, it's actually the other way around. You're the only person, uh, you're, uh, you're the only MP representing Pakatan Harapan. Uh, the other six members are from Bersatu, AMNO, there's two of them, PAS, uh, uh, um, PBB or uh, GPS um, from Sarawak and um, Zeeve Jayakuma who is now an independent. Um, it seems like you're fighting for Pakatan Harapan alone. Do you feel that is the case for this Parliamentary Select Committee? Uh, I don't think so. As I said, Parliamentary Select Committee is a bipartisan committee. Um, when, we, when I made this decision and when I sent this letter, it wasn't on my own accord. I, I yeah. consulted with my committee and that's why I say it has to be a committee decision. So I consulted my committee and explained the rationale and also the intention that we have and they are supportive of it. So that is only then I had my so-called legitimacy authority to send the letter on behalf of the committee to express our intention to meet. So you rightly said that it is a bipartisan and I said if the government is so concerned about politics in the main plenary hall, then allow at least the select committees to work because this is a bipartisan committee. And this is so important, as I said, to deal properly with a pandemic, you need public trust. What better way to build public trust than to have a bipartisan uh, parliamentary oversight over the matter? Yeah, um, also there is a conversation into the kind of uh, items that will be discussed uh, in this uh, parliamentary select committee. Um, what would be some of the items that you want to focus on predominantly? Let's say you have the first sitting. What would be the top two or three agenda that would be tabled and would be discussed there? I think the two main agenda that we want to discuss, of course, number one is the approach uh, the government is doing towards COVID-19 itself. And I'm talking about medical policies and non-medical policies in terms of uh, how the government make decisions and the reason behind every decision that they make, whether is it to impose uh, restrictions, interventions, uh, CMCO, YMC, uh, MCO, uh, RMCOs, and all the other names, or right now the, the National Recovery Program. We want to understand the granular data of and the reasoning behind every decisions. And that's number one, of course. Uh, number two is uh, the we want to understand the progress, obstacles, and, and what things that we can make better for the national immunization, uh, COVID-19 immunization program of PIC. And, and I think these are the two main uh, agendas that we are focusing on. Uh, the first meeting, uh, ideally, I would love to hear uh, briefings from two main ministries, of course, Ministry of Health, regarding the health approach towards COVID-19. And, and we want to know what is the, uh, the obstacles, what are the, the troubles they are facing, including hospital occupancies, ICU issues. And of course, we want to get another briefing from MOSTI itself on the PIC on the uh, NCIP and from there maybe uh, what we are planning to do is to get an external expert committee because I think we, we also need to realize our limitations in terms of our expertise in any issues so it is also under uh, standing order 83 2 we have the authority to summon any experts whether there is academia private sector NGOs or anyone that, that has the know-how the knowledge of the issues to give to advisors so you see what what we are uh, aiming to achieve is for this select committee to be like a shadow uh, a cabinet, not a shadow cabinet, a shadow con committee to, 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 to look into. And I always say this to affirm, confirm and add input into the approach to the government for the specific issue that we're discussing. In other Westminster style houses, uh, the select committees or the special select committee uh, tends to wield um, considerable power. Uh, that kind of power is not seen in our uh, type of parliament. 
uh, do you wish to see your committee exercise a little bit more power when it comes to uh, summoning um, ministers, summoning uh, authorities, uh, government officials and the likes uh, to explain uh, what has been done and what is going to be done? Uh, do you mm -hmm. feel that that role is now greater enhanced uh, considering uh, that the country is facing unprecedented crisis right now? Yeah, I think uh, unprecedented times requires unprecedented transparency. And what better way to have it is at the select committees because maybe we understand that certain information that's been divulged are sensitive in nature. So we can have an understanding within the committee itself, but at least there has to be some form of transparency. There has to be some form of discourse. There has to be some form of scrutiny and oversight by the government. So of course, uh, based on the standing order, we do have authority to summon the ministers, to summon people to come. Uh, the only uh, lack that we have in Malaysia, and this is a reform that I hope that we will see in the future, is that the government is not compelled to respond if we were to, in, to release a report or to release uh, recommendations. If we look at examples in the UK and Australia, every time a committee produces a report or recommendation, the government is compelled to respond within a certain period of time. That currently is not, uh, such authority is not available in Malaysia, but I do hope, as I said, the, the, the whole mantra, extraordinary times calls for extraordinary transparency, and I hope that this can start within the Parliamentary Select Committee. Okay. Um, the conversation also has to revolve around the kind of um, sister committees that are currently going to take place. Uh, we're talking about the Special Select Committee on Security, um, on Education, um, on Women, Children, Affairs and Social Development. These are, you know, on Finance and Economy. <laughs> These are rather all pertinent issues to be discussed. However, other than the PAC and the Special Select Committee on Health, Science and Innovation, we have yet to see some definitive date being set. Are you guys setting as an example uh, or paving the way for all the other select committee chairpersons to put down a definitive date on uh, resuming uh, the or conducting uh, the business of the people? I think uh, it's, I mean, I would say that we want to set an example or send a message, but the main uh, motivation is for us ourselves to carry out our duties and responsibility. As mentioned before, I mean, the, the, the Parliamentary Select Committee of Health, Science and Innovation plays probably the most pivotal role currently in, in the midst of COVID-19. We see the numbers increasing, positive rates increasing, uh, infection rate increasing. And I think we need to uh, at least set the example, set the ball going, and also hopefully uh, 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 push the parliament and also the ministers to allow us to meet and then all the other committees which touch on very important uh, subject matters, even in this pandemic, should then uh, uh, follow along. Okay, we'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more with the MP of Bandar Kuching. Thanks for staying on with us. I have with me uh, Yang Bohomad, Dr. Kelvin Yi. Um, YB, we've discussed at length about the kind of uh, reactionary items that the government is going through. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, noise uh, coming in from various sectors saying that this government is unable to execute its duties. However, it comes to bear to point that it's not easy uh, managing this crisis collectively. So let's not talk about the government so much. Let's talk about the efforts that both the AP and Pakatan Harapan is actually doing. Um, the statement coming in from the three leaders of the Pakatan Harapan parties uh, saying that uh, a definitive date that the parliament must be opened by August the 1st must be done or else the MPs uh, will go to the parliament regardless. Um, what kind of message is uh, meant to be sent to the people when the leaders of your party is sending these kind of statements uh, to both uh, the authorities as well as uh, for the public to consume? I think the main message that we want to send is that uh, in order for us to deal with this pandemic properly, we cannot stifle democracy. We cannot stifle parliamentary oversight. We cannot, we cannot uh, have this message that the government knows all and the government is the only one that makes the decision for all of us. So I think the best way for us to actually deal with this is a whole of society, whole of government. And this involves uh, letting parliamentary democracy thrive, letting each MP play their part 
not just to scrutinize, not just to as check and balance, but to actually also give input, to give our views on how things are being done. And I think this is a wartime situation. We need all hands on board. And any any general that is talking about divisive, talking about uh, uh, going solo, should not be leading the charge against this uh, so-called uh, invincible enemy. So I think this is the message that uh, the Pakatan Harapan is trying to send, that we as parliamentarians want to play a part. And based on examples of different countries all around the world, the best way to deal with this pandemic is to have parliamentary democracy thrive. And we've seen this in, in the UK, where when the pandemic is at its peak, parliament meets even more to discuss and be transparent. That builds public confidence, that builds public trust. I know that it's important for us to have the parliamentary sitting right now, but there's a lot of skepticism amongst the public that says that there might not be anything done anyway if the parliament is resuming the business of the people. Do you share this sentiment? Do you feel that existential change will happen if the parliament sits uh, in this upcoming, um, or if the parliament is reopened? Again, it, it, it again depends on what the agenda of the parliament is. I have of the opinion, and I believe my party is of the opinion, that if the parliament is to sit even before 1st of August and it's merely a cosmetic sitting where they discuss trivial matters, we will not be uh, supportive of it. Our condition for a parliamentary sitting has to be, it has to discuss on COVID-19, the approach of COVID-19, both on medical and non-medical, and also, uh, 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 of course, on the effects on the economy. And number three, on the emergency ordinance. We need to debate and also pass a bill on the emergency ordinance itself. So these are our criteria. This is what we believe has to be debated in the first meetings. And we are not supportive of any cosmetic uh, uh, meeting even before the 1st of August. Okay. Um, finally, uh, the, there is this issue of um, the stance of the no confidence vote that might take place. Do you have a say in this um, view? Uh, do you think that this kind of motion is important um, if it is ever tabled, uh, if the parliament resumes its business? I think in my view, this is not a priority. I think the priority, as I mentioned just now, is talking about policies for the people, whether it's COVID-19, the economy, or as, uh, to debate the emergency ordinance itself. I think uh, my leaders has even come up with public statements that they will not support in case there is coming up in this sitting a uh, 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 support of uh, vote of no confidence, but our general focus will be on policies that will involve the day-to-day -day life of the people. All right, one more break before we continue our conversation with YB Kelvin Yi of Banda Kucheng. Thanks for staying on with us. Uh, I have with me the chairperson of the Special Select Committee on Health, Science and Innovation, uh, Yang Bohmat, Dr. Kelvin Yi. Uh, YB, uh, you've seen some of the reports coming in from the COVID-19 uh, um, uh, vaccination programs. Uh, you have also stated in some forums that um, you have seen the improvements of this vaccination program taking place in the country, uh, but you are saying that there could be some improvements. Um, where do you see some of the improvements you think should take place when it comes to the vaccination programs in the country? I think the next three months will be very critical in our, uh, our fight or uh, this whole vaccination drive is because when the main issue that we faced at the beginning, which was the stop uh, bottleneck, it is being resolved. I think we're looking at even 12 million uh, doses in July, and that's very significant because I think until now we have only given out about 8 million. So imagine suddenly we're having 12 million. So the, the gaps that I saw at the beginning was the involvement of the private sector, how it could have been fastened, uh, not too much, uh, uh, I'll say, focused on mega PPVs, which may limit our reach, especially to the rural areas or people that may not have the mobility to get to the PPVs. So that's why the next three months, I will hope to see more private sectors get Getting involved, the GPs being mobilized. Uh, from what I understand, it's about 2,005 GPs are being recruited under Protect Health. Uh, they they can be more. I would like to see up to 5,000 GPs uh, being uh, more 
mobilized all around Malaysia because I think some people, they feel more comfortable going to the LGPs than to queue up or to go to a big uh, mega PPVs. So I think one of these things has to be addressed to get all uh, sectors involved, the private sector and including the NGOs because uh, one community that we really, really need, need to reach out and to vaccinate our migrant community. They are within the community and if they're not protected, we ourselves are not protected. That's why we need to mobilize the NGOs, we need to mobilize even Doctors Without Borders that have uh, existing clinics for this community uh, uh, in our cities. So you see, again, due to deficit trust, uh, this obviously the migrant community, whether documented or undocumented, they will not come to a government facility. They will be more comfortable coming to such facility they have been for to get their general primary care uh, treatment. So we need to uh, have this comprehensive collaboration with them, whole society, whole of government, and, and, and just push through this uh, vaccination. So the next three months will be very critical in order to achieve uh, our daily targets and also uh, so-called herd immunity target by end of the year. Okay, and with that in mind, do you see some a solution that is going to take place without the select committee being there? Do you feel that this is going to be a self-correcting measure uh, that can resolve itself? Or do you feel that the special select committee hit, uh, sitting uh, would actually assist in uh, achieving these goals that you set out earlier? I think the select committee plays an important role. Uh, we can even have a weekly meeting to to, to get reports, firstly, get reports of what happened the week or the, the two weeks before, and then what the obstacles, what were the gaps, what are the, what are the issues that they face, then we can together brainstorm and give our views in terms of how they can solve it. So then it's on real time solving issues. So they have their internal discussion within the ministry, and then now it's an external with the parliamentary select committee, which we will also activate ex another external experts involving private sectors, academia, NGOs, that could then uh, uh, be this uh, umbrella where the whole society can together on in real time, make decisions, provide input to, to improve things if we uh, hit any roadblocks in between. And there will be definitely roadblocks in between. So we want to play our part to just help that and iron out and polish stuff. All right, great. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best and stay safe and stay healthy. Uh, you yourself have been a COVID uh, survivor, um, <laughs> you know, and things, of course, have not changed uh, for the better since then. So I really hope uh, that uh, the people of Malaysia can understand the implications of having the parliamentary sitting and, of course, having the select committee taking place. I think it helps for the best of us, all of us, actually, to see some check and balance taking place. Until then, uh, that was YB Dr. Kelvin Yi, MP of Banda Kuching, as well as Chairperson of the Special Select Committee on Health, Science and Innovation. Uh, if you've missed any part of this show, just head on to astroawani.com, look for Notepad over there. You can also look for uh, Kelvin Yi or the PSC on Health. There's a lot of items that can be uh, read up on that. Having said that, we are also covering the news quite extensively when it comes to the parliamentary sitting. Do check out on our social sites as well as uh, astroawani.com and channel 501 on astroawani. Until then, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.